the department has been underspending. Um, and it is underspending. So, so it's important that we say this. And we have said that in the legislature so that we are not seen to be hiding our weaknesses. So one is brought into a department which has been underspending uh, for a very long time, um, almost below, for more than four or five financial years at least, as we know, um, almost below 55%. In some respects, less than 50 percent. In part, because municipalities are not spending on infrastructure. For you to move with human settlement, municipalities must have approved the townships. And as you know, in the last four or five years, there was a, 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 a serious challenge with regard to availability of uh, uh, electricity in our national grid challenges of load shedding in the past three, four years. That has been put behind us now with Midupi Power Station now commissioned. Um, that, in part, that part has been resolved. Um, the, the, the president, the new president coming into office in February has signed off the independent power producers. And I know that there are issues between labor and government with regard to this. I, I suspect that those matters will be resolved in time. We're going to be saying that we need alternative sources of energy uh, to uh, increase um, energy in our national grid. And then you oppose technology that seeks to bring even cleaner energy uh, than coal-fired energy as it is in our country at the present moment. Uh, but that decision seeks to ensure that the stability um, in the country with regard to accessible to energy so that industry can then be confident that it can invest. And then when industry invests, the, the ripple effect or the positive results of in increased investment is that you'll have more people working. And the more people you have working, these people will access the, the necessary services and the municipalities will be able to deduct the revenue in, in that sense. So everything fist to the other. Now, local government, municipalities have not been spending on um, bulk infrastructure. And that, in part, has delayed or rather pushed back uh, the propensity of Department of Human Settlement to spend on its budget as it has been. That's one part. The second part is inefficiencies in the system. In the department that I'm leading, um, you have 80% of people employed in the department that really are qualified in public administration, most of them. Not necessarily qualified in the engineering and build and construction environment. So we have shortage, shortage of skills in construction management, time planning, some of them at least we have. Uh, but we've got shortage of skill in construction management. And to that extent, uh, deficiencies of uh, our service providers uh, fall through the crack. No one follows up with efficient mechanisms of controls. And as a consequence, contractors do as they wish in any way, even when they don't deliver the services, there are no consequences for that. Now, it doesn't happen anywhere in developing economies. In Singapore, I visited Singapore some few years ago, and we visited the construction sites in China. When you, when you get a, a tender, um, you have procured a particular service, it is embedded in your service level agreement, and we have them as well. We do have those kind of arrangements in our department as well. The challenge is that we do not then execute the service level agreements with service providers as we would have agreed with them when they won the tenders. Now, anywhere in the world, once you have received a tender and you must build 10,000 houses or you must build a road, embedded in that agreement is that by this time you must have achieved this number of kilometers um, in that road construction. Or you must have built this number of houses by this particular period. By this number of period, people must be staying in those houses. Um, in our country, a, co a contractor is given a job um, of building 1,000 houses, 
delivers 200,000 semi in three years, and there are no consequences. There's one that tender. We must be sympathetic to them because these are emerging small enterprises. They do not have capital um, input, so, so, so we must be you know, tolerant about uh, that level of mediocrity. We have made a commitment in our budget speech that that's going to be a thing of the past. To that extent, I've instructed the head of department to review all contracts that have been, um, not stopping them, but review, review them. All contracts that have been awarded for 2018-19 budget year uh, to ensure that we inculcate in the contracts the responsibility by those that have been given tenders to deliver on what they're supposed to be delivering. Uh, expenditure on the 5.4 billion rand budget for human settlement, ladies and gentlemen, to deliver 32,000 houses cannot be a difficult task um, to accomplish. It's a very simple thing. You must know what have you planned, how much have you planned, where, and for who. It's as simple as I am saying it, and I do not see a need uh, for the department to understand in that regard. Um, the 2018-19 the, the, the HSDG budget, as it were, and I'm going to give you just a summary of where the allocations is. I'm repeating it again. Because Johannesburg, the city of Johannesburg is spending little. In fact, it has returned the, the Urban Settlement Development Grant to the national fiscals in the previous financial year, almost close to 350 million rand, because it could not spend money on infrastructure, infrastructure for human settlement, and as a consequence, I understand. They do not have the plans ready for my department to spend the resources and the budget there. They are receiving the smallest allocation of the budget, 385 million rand for this financial year, because they, they do not have their projects ready. They have underspent on bulk infrastructure, so it's clear for this year that in absence of spending on bulk infrastructure, I'll not be able to build houses for the people there. But we have mitigated this weakness in the city of Johannesburg, and you know that when I came into office, there were riots in the south of Johannesburg. Eldorado Park, Fine Town, Freedom Park, Ennardale, Orange Farm, those areas in the south, far southwest and Lufereng area, so where to people are looking for houses. Everywhere in the province, people are looking for houses. But the city had underspent last year on infrastructure. I've raised this issue with the mayor of the city, and we have agreed that he and I have to hold the officials accountable to ensure that there is expenditure with regard to infrastructure. So they are receiving 385 million rand from my budget. The Western region, interestingly, as one of the smallest region per capita, if you look at the population, yet is receiving 1.3 billion rand um, from a human settlement development grant uh, for this year. Why? Because the West Rand is implementing the Human Settlement Development Grant more or less in an effective, efficient, and economic fashion. They've got three projects that are unfolding there. Um, uh, Elia Bahai, Hotran, the Montrose Mega Human Settlement Project. All of this in total is going to yield about close to 35, 40,000 housing units to the people. They're receiving 1.3 billion rand. And ladies and gentlemen, this has got nothing to do with the fact that I originate from the West Rand. Um, I have not taken part in this. It is technocrats who are um, looking at um, municipal readiness index for human settlement, allocated according to the readiness of the project, including those that will be capable uh, to spend this money. Uh, but we would have to manage it in such a way that if there are early signals, early signals of under expenditure, we should be able to divert the resources to projects that are, are performing. And this is what we are going to be doing this year. Now, the role of the accounting officer in this regard is going to be very critical with the chief financial officer to read expenditure patterns so that if there are signs that 
uh, this program will not spend, we will not be hesitant to move the resources from one place to the other, or from one municipality, by the way, to the other municipality. City Bay region, which has been put under administration by the provincial government, is, re is receiving 569 million rand. Ekurulene region, 693 million rand. The Swane region, 651 million rand. And of course, projects under the management and leadership control of the head office is 1.7 billion rand. In part to finish what we call the legacy projects. Legacy projects are the projects that were started by provincial government that were looking at very small projects, 200,000 there, 500, 600 there, and so on. And in many cases, the projects were not completed because of the uh, shortage of infrastructure in many cases, or in some cases, National House Builders Registration um, Authority have stopped the project because they are not complying with regulations, with building regulations.